and welcome. I'm Enigmas. Let's go. Yeah, I am, uh, you know, taking some, uh, some time today and tomorrow and Saturday. We're going to try to get this project up and going. We're trying to get this thing up off the ground, so to speak. And to do that, we need to figure out how to render some stuff and things. All right. Hello, Wolfborn. How are you? Yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> stream gizmo here is acting up, I think. I need to reset him. Gone, really? Huh. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, uh, really? It's funny, Wolfies. Uh, you say hi to me, right? And I say hi to you. And we're all here. You don't even show up as a user in chat. I click on users in chat. Yeah, Lurks is showing up. Yeah, I'll see. I don't see Wolfborn. Are you sure you even exist, Wolfborn? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, I keep seeing chat messages from you. Guess we'll have to figure it out. No, I don't think it is because you're a mug, because I see myself. Also, I see stream elements, whose only job is to, like, do some other stuff, right? Like, uh, announce who's, fought, who's recently followed me, announce when I go live, that sort of thing, yeah? Uh... <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, Twitch just likes to pretend you don't exist, I think. I don't, I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, crazy. Anyways, but yeah, so, um... Yeah, man. Uh, people, people at work are super cool. They're like, yeah, man, take some, take some time. I gotta make up for that time. Trust me. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, I've got a few days. I can, uh, we can get this project up and going off the ground. We can figure out how to do some basic stuff and things like rendering tiles, which, uh, oof, it seems, uh, I don't know, man. I'm not sure if I just keep overthinking it or what. Sometimes it seems like it really ought to be like the easiest thing. Another time it seems like very non-trivial. Can you wonder why, like, you know, if you're gonna put out a game engine, why wouldn't you just have some help with this somewhere in your game engine? But like, whatever. You know, it's fine. It's fine. So we're just gonna We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So we've got we've got a pipeline going. Right, so we've got we've got our Vox Tiles module here. Right, and inside of that we've got our pipeline. Or uh, it doesn't do anything yet, but that's fun. We have uh, the beginnings of some map code, right? And then what? Where we where we've thrown our tile types. You know, after adding all of the derives. Make sure we've got everything we need for that. And here's our indexes into our image. So we know exactly uh, where to find each of these uh, things inside of a texture atlas. Which, uh, which the plugin code for this did not use the texture atlas. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. I'll, it'll be curious to figure out, like, well, why didn't they do that? You know? Hmm. What did, uh, what did they do instead? I don't know. We've got uh, we've got some chunks, got some chunks and things up in here, and uh, which is cool because uh, we've got ourselves a, a tiled array of a uh, ten twenty four. I think there was a way to specify some sort of a default value, but we're not, we're not we're not initializing an array here, right? Yeah, so we're just we're just saying that a chunk is a struct that contains tiles whose type type of tiles is tile type or an array of tile types 1024 long so that's uh you know 1k of uh integers we might even uh depending on how this goes we may even get rid of this whole tile type thing here to begin with and uh make this uh an integer right basically what anything that conforms well to maybe some data formats or something right Maybe uh, U8. I think the I think U8's max value is like 255, which uh, matches well, I think, with certain uh, data formats for uh, 
or color images, which is useful for textures and whatnot, if that's how you want to store this sort of a data. Right? Okay, I'll figure that out. Um, yeah, so we just that'll be that'll be interesting, right? Because uh, one thing you know, we could randomly generate some stuff, and that'll be good. But what if we want to persist a map that we had randomly generated? And I'm thinking like you know, images are really good at storing numbers, lots of them, you know. You can even, like, uh, compress them with various formats, right? Like PNG. You know, so that's kind of like, all right. Yeah, you can read one of those guys in. Read its, uh, re read off some data. You, you've got up to four components, right? RGBA, basically. And then, uh, you know, whether you store those as U8s or uh, as floats or, or whatever. Figure that out, and you get some values out of it, and that'll help us to, uh, you know, you could you could read in a lot of data that way. That's uh, seems like yeah, seems pretty nice. You can even have uh, x x and y sort of stuff in there for reaching into the texture atlas sort of a thing, as opposed to this, which is just a number. This right here limits the thought to like so. If we just had a number. Right, and we were using U8 to store that sort of number, and that limits you to like what to the 255 tiles, right? But if you're using two components on X and a Y, then that's like 255 squared, right, or 256 squared, probably, right? Because you're starting with zero, you know, just because you know the max number is yeah. All right, but yeah, 256 squared. So that is good. Uh, you have all sorts of crazy tiles, right? Then we plan on generating a whole lot of them from uh, using that tile setter thing. Who knows? Who knows how many tiles we may want to be able to reference? All right. So, what am I thinking about? Yeah. So we got a. Uh, so we got our chunks. We got a map. Which right now our map is just has like what it has a tile size. Which I guess it's supposed to just be a width and a height, right? Which is uh, I don't know. They're all square tiles. Didn't we? Uh, we could just. Make that an ant. I'm not sure what the original code was doing in certain places. You know? No, uh, that's fine. We'll, we, won't, we won't worry about it. So, uh, we're just gonna go with, uh, map width. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's how many chunks wide this is. This is kind of a variable sort of dude. Right? So we can grow out our, our, our chunks. And, uh, so this would be, this would be where, too, like, if we wanted to, uh, have some sort of a tree structure to represent our, you know, to, to help to map everything out, like a quad tree or something, right? You could, uh, you could replace this, uh, Beck chunks with sort of quad tree. And the idea, then, is that you would render the, uh, you know, so quickly figure out what chunks are visible nearby. And, and kind of load and unload them, right? Sort of a thing. You may also be interested in changing tile, being able to mutate the tile type of a tile. We can, uh, we can get tiles, we can set tiles. So that all seems very good. Yeah, so we can, we can come up with a few things. So, uh, so what else we got? We got some sort of a uh, Vox tile plug plugin. For Bevy, where right now we're basically saying like, "Hey, there's a there's a map thing that you might think about as being an asset," and then uh, we also do something or other with our render graph here, right? Where we can, um, where we kind of uh, copied what they were doing, right? We're just like, I don't know. I guess we'll we'll grab resources, and then we'll. Uh, yeah, we'll get a mutable render graph from our resources, and we'll take the render graph that we got from the resources, and we'll add a Vox tile graph using some resources. So, you know, it's very, I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of got a weird circular nature to, to what's going on here. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll see how much of that we, we need. Uh, we'll maybe figure out a better way to do it. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see here. So we've got a. Uh, we also have some Vox tile components, right? Our our Vox tile map components. That'll be as that is interesting. 
because uh, you know, so we've got our map asset, got some texture atlases, right? Or at least a texture atlas, and we've got a transform for it. So I don't know, do we need a global transform too, and some other stuff? Are we positioning this thing? How does this work? Okay, so the whole so we're just uh, we're just going through. We're trying to do uh, a lot of the bevy integration stuff sort of up front, right? So that uh, the bevy uh, can be happy with what we're doing because when you work with a framework, right, or an engine sort of thing like you know bevy's supposed to be, right, you have to do things the engine's way, right? You can't just uh, go willy nilly crazy because uh, you're gonna lose uh gonna lose some stuff and things. Right, have to uh, okay, it's a little, a little less weird. Just to... okay, that's better. All right, man, uh, which is just being funny. All right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna figure some stuff out. That's what we're gonna figure out. All right, so um, I think pipeline was what I was working on next. Right, because we have to be able to, we have to be able to render a chunk at least, right? And if we could, uh, so if we could throw some gizmos into a chunk, and that'll get us something that we can, we could play around with a whole lot of stuff. So, you know, bear in mind, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I am, uh, I am not a graphics coder <laughs> by profession. Uh, so this is, uh, this is gonna take, uh, this is gonna take a moment and some fiddling, and, uh, so. You know, we can we can hang out and stuff and as I as I try to figure things out, we're gonna listen to some music. Uh yeah, let's get some let's get some music going. You guys can let me know how that is. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to focus. You know, you guys can ask questions. You know, let me know what you're thinking. Give me some input. And then uh yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna try to figure some stuff out as best we can. Alright. Yeah, what am I doing? I got some. Where'd my where'd my pipelines go? Here we go. Here we go. Got some pipelines. So I think inside of the pipeline function, we're just gonna for now we're just gonna, gonna, gonna imitate what we find elsewhere. So we need to build the. Uh, let's see, what is it? Our vox. We're calling this our vox tile, right? Uh, pipeline. Uh, is it a box tile map pipeline? I don't know. Box tile. Yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, so um, we're gonna take in some things here. We're gonna take in some shaders, mutable reference of asset shader. All right, now we're talking about shaders and stuff. That's another thing I don't really have a whole lot of experience in. Sure, I've copied a few and I get the general sort of a gist. It's like, well, how's that work in practice? I don't, I don't have that sort of experience to be able to figure that sort of thing out. Yeah, I mean, let's go to, let's go to Prelude, get some assets up in there. Haters. That's the Bevy Prelude again, huh? Yes. Keep you know, getting stuff from the Bevy Prelude if we can. All right, so that right there says Bevy Render Pipeline. Let's just go ahead and start to organize our imports a little bit. Because, you know, getting all these Bevy things up in there. Let's just, uh, we're going to hit that. Render graph. And then what? We can uh, render our render pipeline. Right. Yeah. Looking good. So this here is our yeah. So we've got some assets. We've got shader already. We've got our pipeline descriptor. I think IntelliJ just needs to catch up to what we've done, and that is fine and good. So basically now. Yeah, we're just going to build a pipeline descriptor. That's what we're going to do. So what do we need for our pipeline descriptor? So we need some sort of a rasterization state. Which for fun, we'll just we'll, we'll just fill these things in first. It looks like they are optional. 
but we'll just uh, do it the easiest way. We need a depth sensor state, which for now we will say none. We need color states, which uh, we could do some sort of back bang Bama. Looking good. We need, uh, what else do we need? Oof, all right. Got some fancy syntax over here, it looks like, to where we can basically copy stuff in from another pipeline descriptor. So let's uh let's let's do that. So we're gonna say what new shader ages. Alright, so we've got what? This is bevy render, which seems different than render graph somehow. Alright. Throw that in there. Uh, did I throw it in there? What did I do? Yeah, render shader shader stages. That's correct. Alright. Cool. So yeah. So we got a bunch of render stuff now. So we can just say render. Open that up. Circle that out. Trying to keep things somewhat pretty and organized. Alt O. Great. Should have, uh, that should help to clean some things up. Alright. Pipeline descriptor. We got some new shader stages. Oh, sweet. What else? Okay, so yeah, so now I need to do something about these shader stages. Which seems to mean I have to supply a vertex shader. Right? So we could say what? Shaders dot add shader. Whoa. Come on. Man. Add a shader from GLSL. Yep, we can just we can keep that going there. Is that pretty? Alright, shader stage vertex. Mouse mag, because I, I don't know about no shader stage. Alright, we'll import it. This is under render shader shader stage, right? So, we already have shader stages. And just take this guy, right? Copy, paste him over here. Keeping it pretty. All right, there we go. So we got our shader stage vertex, and then we are going to include a string. What type of string are we including? We're going to include the tile map dot vert. So far. Like for right now, we're just gonna stick with what's going on, kind of our little example that we're working with, and we'll figure out what needs to change to line up with what we're doing. All right? So we've got sum here. Fragment is now sum. Uh, shaders dot add. What are we adding? Another shader from GLSL. Uh, there we go. Three. Three close friends there. Looks good. And we've got shader stage fragment. Put a comma in there. We can say what? Include string file map dot right. Now I think I would rather what would we, we rather call this? We kind of have our vox vox tile thing going, don't we? Yeah, vox tile. All right, so this is our this is our vox tiles. Let's call, let's call them that. Uh, vox tile. The idea being that uh, yeah, there there seems to be two major ways of doing tiles, kind of in a hardware accelerated fashion. And ones where you make heavy, yeah. You know, ones, ones where you basically have a bunch of triangles and you, you know, 
kind of normal and you're just trying to efficiently render those triangles, those quads, you know, as you can with the correct, uh, you know, kind of a texture coordinates, right? And then the other way is to basically have one big quad that, uh, you know, with a, with a whole lot of stuff going on in the fragment shader uh, to make it so that way it does what you want it to do. So, you know, each each uh, approach kind of has its own pros and cons. That is fine. We are going to just... So, we're starting off with the voxel one for now. We could play around with the other type later. Uh, we're hoping to, hoping to learn some things from this approach. That may be helpful to for us in 3D later. Should you know if that's what we if that's what we're choosing to do, All right? So this is the uh, kind of project's meant to it's meant to grow. It's meant to uh, figure a lot of stuff and things out with it. Do we have a lot of what we need? Except we now we need to fill out the rasterization state, the depth stencil state, and our color states. All right, so this uh, this seems very uh, modern hardware-ish, Vulcan-esque sort of thing that we're doing here. That's that's what this is. So let's uh, let's get it done. But yeah, we want some rasterization state descriptor. All right. Now what? We want to do some front face. This right here tells us. Uh, how our front faces are defined. Right now we're just gonna stick with the example and go with counterclockwise for the front face. This talks about the this is about the winding of the triangles to determine which way is the front and which way is the back. So we can call the back faces, right? We can say call mode. Because I guess the assumption here is that if it is facing away from you, then it is likely occluded by something else. And that you don't want to see the back of a thing. So it's kind of a shortcut, sort of a don't draw the thing if its back is facing you. Sort of a test. So here we've got some depth bias is zero. We've got uh, some depth bias slope scale, sure. which is a uh, zero dot. We have uh, a depth bias clamp, which is uh, zero down. And we have a clamp depth, which is false. So I think maybe a lot of this has to do with the, the 2D nature of uh, the tile map that we're rendering. I'm not 100% sure on like all of these things and what they do. I do know what these mean. <laughs> So we've got a, so now we can do some depth stencils. We can say sum, a depth stencil state descriptor. And then what? We could say format. What are we formatting here? We need some sort of a texture format. We're going to say depth 32 float. This is for, I guess, the the kind of texture format of the depth stencil. Or this is uh, primarily for 3D stuff. We're just trying to do hardware accelerated 2D in it. That's, uh, that's, that's what we're doing here. So we've got uh, depth, right enabled, and true. Because depth is also good to have in 2D. After all, you want your sprites to be in front of the map so that you can see them. Right? So, uh, yeah, so depth is actually good for 2D as well. We can do a depth compare. This right here is going to be our compare function. Right? All right. So, yeah, that render pipeline is getting long. All right, so we're going to have to take a look at that, clean that up a little bit. So what do we have here? We've got uh, so yeah, our compare function. We want that to be less equal. What else we got? We got some stencil. 
for a stin soul date descriptor let's um yeah let's not worry about uh let's not columnize this too much it's a bit unwieldy for it yeah so uh, let's see what are we want here we want some front it's not fonts but fronts uh, the stencil state descriptor and ignore. We've got the back for our stencil state descriptor and ignore. Ooh, all right. And uh, what else we got? We got some read mask zero, and we have the right mask. All right. Looks good. This is for our, yeah, stencil state descriptor. All right. Where we have stencils and state descriptors and all of that. This all reminds me very much of when I was playing around with a Vulcan exam. So that's basically what we're setting up here is the render pipeline for our, uh, you know, for our special tile box, box, the box. Voxel tiles. That's what we're doing. We're doing some voxel tiles. Yeah, I got too many weird box nouns in my head from I don't know where. All right, cool. So, but we do have this pipeline guy, right? So, yeah, we've got this. This is this is from pipeline. Now, so let me just throw this in here. All right, this is for render pipeline, so we can just. At that and then what? Keep it pretty a little bit. All right, we're gonna do a, I'm gonna do Control Alt O to tell IntelliJ to you know basically alpha alphabetize my imports for me, and then I can come in here and clean up the the lines. And there may be enough stuff in here to warrant just saying like give me star from pipeline, but I don't know. But that could be a lot of stuff. Nothing wrong with being explicit at first. And, yeah, to figure out what you want to do with it later. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Let's see if it compiles at all. But I have no idea. So this is a public function, so at least I shouldn't complain about this not being uh, used yet. Ooh, no such file or directory. OS error. And that's perfectly fine and good, because we don't actually have it yet, do we? Yeah, that's pretty cool that it makes a, uh... It's a compiler error for this file to not exist yet. So we're gonna have to... We're gonna take a look at that one. Uh, what is this guy here? No associated item named Ignore. What? What are you talking about? No associated item for Ignore. Oh! Oh, it's actually slightly different to you than I thought it was. This is not just a stencil state descriptor. This is a stencil state face descriptor. So we're going to want to import that guy. And uh, so this one is probably also a face descriptor. All right, so that looks good. So we can uh, we can do that. Now we've uh, we've done some weird stuff. Okay, so this is also part of the render pipeline. And we can just you can just throw it in there, and then uh, now what? Now we've got this texture texture format. This is part of render, just like this here is render, but as opposed to pipeline, it is URST texture. All right. This guy belongs here. There we go. Okay, yep, still gonna be mad about the Vox tile stuff not being there. But uh, everything else looks happy. So that's, that is good. So for now, we're still kind of inside of our little main guy here, so it's going to be looking for these shaders kind of in our root source directory. Let's go ahead then and provide provide that. So for now I'm just going to copy paste 
Because, uh, what he's got. Rather than trying to type it in or understand it quite yet, because we're, you know, I still have, I still have got a lot of learning curve to go on, like, how to, how to render, you know, do this sort of rendering. A lot of learning curves. So we're just gonna copy paste for now and then and tweak it and figure it out, play with it. Get it doing the best we can for us, right? So what are we calling this? Uh, yeah, it looks like we want Vox Tiles Vert and Vox Tiles Frag. All right, so here we go. Then we want uh, Vox Tiles dot Vert. Yeah. Now we want. Uh, I want a new, uh, yeah, box underscore tiles dot frag. There we go. Yeah, head over to our Wow, there we go. We got some vertex stuff now. We got some vertex positions. We got some vertex stuff of things. This is version 450 of the GLSL. So this is uh, compatible with the. Uh, it's compatible with OpenGL as well. Okay. All right. Much prefer the uh, two two space indents, please. Uh, configure indents of GLSL. What do we got here, man? Yeah, just, uh, yeah. Two. 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 Alright, I had okay there. Looking better. Now what? Yep, so here's our bevy branch. We're just playing around with bevy. So we're gonna have, uh, control save there. What else do we want? Hmm. Right? Yeah, this person, man, camera, TV. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I remember a lot of this being uh, like a model view pro projection matrix sort of stuff, right? Yep. So here's our like our model transform, camera transform, right? That's sort of the thing. If we're doing with then we got our float layers and stuff and you basically uh, multiply that all together to get your vertex position sort of the sort of the deal i'm not 100 sure on classes going on here i do see that we have this sort of position where we've defined a position based on vertex position right and then we say and we multiply that by some not 100% sure why he's doing that yet, and we may not want to do that for our own account. Yeah, I'm not really sure why this is the case right here. So we're gonna have to have to really play with this to figure out like, what did he do? Why did he do that? Our GL position then is gonna be equal to what? Like I said, our view model kind of projection matrix sort of thing here. Like normally, normally say MVP or something. Model view projection matrix. Yeah. So. Uh, so it's been a while. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't do. I don't do this sort of programming all the time. Because uh, I never got good at. It. Oh, that's the vertex one. I want the fragment shader. All right, let's get let's get that frag shader up. In there. Yeah, what's the uh, what was I looking at? Yeah, I wanted this guy back for temporarily. <laughs> uh, of course, that's fine. So, right, tile map frag. What you doing, man? Get some get some of that tile map frag.
All right, so this time it is looking nice and pretty with, uh, in terms of the formatting, should we not indent the stuff in here? Maybe, maybe not, probably not, right? I don't know, kind of got these, uh, these sorts of directive things that interfere with, you know, mess with stuff, right? Yeah, so we've got some sort of uniform sampler, color material, texture sampler. We got our, we got a, we got a color is equal to color. Or if it is defined, color material uh, texture, then what do we do? Then, let me do this sort of a thing. And I'm a little confused about this if, uh, if def sort of thing. Well, I think I was just going to pass in a single color. I'm pretty sure, like, we were, aren't we always going to do this? So I may end up cleaning a lot of this stuff out just to like we're just going to assume that you're going to get one of those color material textures and that's uh that's all there is to it so, or however it works right and you want to figure out how to get texture atlases working with it that's already in bevy right so let's let's use it let's figure it out make it happen so we've got uh so we've got some color material textures we got our sampler 2ds now this one here, this could be, this should be indented, and that should be like that. Make sort of clear here what we're doing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, let's just, there we go, that, that looks good. Let's keep that looking pretty. Um, what do we got here? We got some models? Yeah, that's our... Yeah, that's our data model for our game that we're, that we're making, right? Cool. So now, now inside of our main, we're gonna hope that it compiles. Because what have we done? We have given it the files that it was asking for, and it appears to be the correct location that it was asking for it. So that's fun and good. I really love that I can just give it like, here's a file that exists in like uh, your your source directory. Oh, okay. And it just uses it. That's just that's pretty cool. I'm kind of I'm loving that include string directive. Uh, it's pretty handy dandy. I like it a lot. All right, so wow, so it it it, it keeps compiling, man. And we when we hit run, well, we're not using our plugin yet, so like it, it just keeps rendering too. Wow, this thing's just <laughs> who knows. It may end up doing something when we're uh, when we're done with it. All right, uh, give us some hope for maybe we're on the right tracks for getting stuff done. But then we've had we've had some good teachers here with this uh, with this tiled plugin. So let's go ahead then, and we're gonna check out. We wanna go back to pipeline again, I think, because we wanna make sure that our uh, kind of our add tile map graph. Is doing something. Yeah, what does all this mean yet? I have no idea. The idea is to get something to kind of, like, you know, get something kind of going, kind of hopefully doing something, even if it doesn't work. And yeah, we're going to beat our head against the wall until we figure out how to make it work. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then we're just going to, we're going to tear through a lot of the documentation. We're going to figure a lot of stuff out. We're going to, we're gonna play with all of, all of the things. We're not. We're gonna do now. We're gonna do some sort of add. We want to add a system node. No man, I don't know what a system node is. Let's add a system node. This is like where I'm like really just like, huh? No idea. Let's uh. So right now he's got he's got something called a tile map chunk string in here, alright? So we're just gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna say uh, our Vox tile uh, chunk. Oh, uh, right? Vox out chunk. And it's a string. It's gonna be happy with it. Alright, so <laughs> now we can go to our render resource is no. Right? 
final map chunk is this? Have I put in like anything? I don't even I don't even know, man. It's kinda weird. I don't even know if that's what we want. What's a tile map chunk? Yeah. The, that's the thing in here because I keep seeing like yeah we're gonna add we're gonna add in this tile map chunk we're gonna do this render resources node and cetera and, and it's like okay man I got it let's do it tile map chunk here we go and you're like okay what is what is a tile map chunk what is this why does it have a layer ID? I don't want layers for my stuff yet. It's like Rupper C. Is, some, is this like some Rust C binding stuff? Got render resources from self. That's like, what? So we derive a default render resources. Render resource. This is a, this is a render resource. So maybe... I don't even know. What is this? Do I just make one and see what happens? I don't know why I have a... I don't know why there's a layer ID. I don't need one. Do I? So it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, I don't... I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, so... So we're just like, I don't know. And we can uh, maybe figure out what this stuff is, right? We're gonna say new. It's true. I don't even know what that is. It's crazy. I guess, well, I guess we're rendering up this. Render resources down. Oh, okay. You're not even gonna tell me what it's about. No documentation here for a render resources node. Thanks a lot. What is, what is in here? Where, where am I at? This is the render resources node to RS. From where? According to the very top of my file, which I don't think you guys can see, uh, this is under bevy render 021 source render graph nodes render resources node. Alright. So, and we did, we did what? We said like, yeah, just, just give me a new one. And what sort of trait does this want? Oh, well, where render T is a render resources. Ah, okay. Well, what is a render resource is? Oh, well. Okay. See, see what I mean? It's like, wow. We got this whole, we got this whole tracking thing down here. Render resources. Eh, I don't, I don't even know. So we could we could make up some sort of crazy chunk thing, right? Yeah, we can we can make it up. I don't know I don't know what it does. I don't know why we want it. We could just we could just make it happy. All right, fake it till you make it. That's kind of the idea here. Is what I'm going with. Yeah. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're just gonna fake it until we make it. So this is inside of our Vox. All right, so this, we're not inside of anything anywhere special here. This is inside of the pipeline. Yeah, we can just stay inside of the pipeline for now, I guess, right? So we already have this trait here, etc. So let's just go ahead then. I guess we could say like, yeah, pub, rucked, right? We're still gonna go with a Vox. Box tile chunk. Alright. And I don't think we need we don't need a layer, I don't think. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going. Uh Repper uh, C. No idea if that's going to be remotely helpful at all. Feels like maybe he's reaching back into that into some tiled library, maybe. I'm not sure. 
Not sure what he's doing or why. Let's uh, drive. Alt. Render resources. Now what? Render resource. All right. Now, now what? I'm just gonna come in here. We need to render resources. What? From Bell. All right, so we have a magic struct with a bunch of magic derives. All right, and now we're gonna do what? We're gonna do some sort of unsafe, simple, biteable, or tile map come. No idea, right? And then what? Now we can. Not for tile map chunk. What is that? Right? We don't even know what that is. So give me one of those box tile chunk. And then in here, we can just throw that in there. All right. That's that's what we're just gonna we're just gonna play it till we make it. It's like we know what we're doing. We have no idea what we're doing. It's okay. So we're gonna do hit self, and we're going to add node edge. Got here node. Let's just let's just keep it up with the strength, right? Because if we if we wanted to, right, we could have our um, right, we could have some sort of a uh, hub const for what for our box file chunk. Just like they do to make sure that like we're really talking about the same sort of thing here, right? We wanna have our static string and it's called this Vox tile chunk. Right? Yeah, we're throw them semicolons up in there. And boom. Now we should be able to say what? Vox tile chunk. And then we can come in here and be like Box tile chunk. And we're not gonna worry about. Alright, what else are we doing? Node main pass. Base. Node. Main. Dot. Unright. Now I just have to figure out where base is. Yeah. Where all where all our base our base our belong bus. Okay, render it's under render graph. Alright, so we want some sort of render graph. We're gonna say we want we want a base here. Alright, so we've got a render graph and we need this render resource is node from there. So, just kind of hit that up. Looks good. Now what? Where did our pipeline go? Alright. Yeah, so you should have figured out where base is by now. We imported it. Alright, so now we could say let mute pipelines equal to resources dot get mute assets pipeline descriptor open close dot unwrap. Alright, now we can do a let Mutt cater for the resources dot get mutt as it's assets and shader close close open close dot ramp 
Unwrap. That looks pretty good. So now we got some shaders, right? Yeah, I was getting some mutable stuff and things from, from a variety of places. We've got pipelines and we've got shaders. So now we want to say pipelines dot sat. Tile map pipeline handle. What is that? No idea. No idea. <laughs> what is this? I just... Just some magic nonsense. I don't get this stuff, man. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, so where's... Where's pipeline? Alright, so, yeah, so he's just got some magic number for our pipeline descriptor here. Alright. So, yeah, let's just import it, I guess, from Prelude. Right? Which means we can just grab that and throw it into here. Alright. All right, so we've got we got Prelude, we've got Asset Handle. I'm just gonna, I'm just like, I don't, I don't even know, man. Just uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, box style pipeline handle. That's what we, that's what we got here. All right, <laughs> crazy. All right, so. That's what we were going to do. I don't know, man. I just copy, I just copy the thing. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't quite get this stuff yet. It's fine. We're just gonna... It's crazy. It don't make any sense. There's no comments on this crap. How am I supposed to know how any of this is supposed to work? This is like some of the most closed-off community I've ever seen. This is how you do a basic thing. I'm not talking about Bevy or Rust. I'm talking about graphics programming and shit. No, no ideas. Alright, so we've got a. Uh, build Vox Tile Pipeline. Yeah, I'm gonna give it some, some, some moot shaders and stuff. All right, let's uh, just do the compile. No, can't find derive macro. What? What render resources? What are you talking about, man? That's under main RS line seventy-seven. Yes, man. It's math. Why is it math? Okay, oh, I can't find uh, render resources. Doesn't seem correct because I was pretty sure. Well, we imported render resources somewhere, right? Uh, render resources. No? Alright, let's try, um... I don't know, so where's, where's render resources come from? Uh, render resources. Alright, so that's not in the pipeline? Right, that was under that uh, weird tile. That's under the weird thing. Render er. Right. Yeah, so we've got bevy. We've got rin render. And then under render, there appears to be something called render er. Right. Yeah, we want some rend er er. Yeah, we've got a render resource and render resources. 
Looks like we also need to have Bevy Core Biteable. Alright. Bevy Core Biteable. I think I misspelled biteable here. Hmm. Ah, I told you, we're not finding any of these things. Hey, it wasn't too bad though. Only a couple, only a couple minutes. And uh, we've got something compiling again. Alright, so, yeah, so we set up some sort of pipeline, stuff, magic, I don't know, man, and, uh, we've got, we've got maps and things, <laughs> I don't even know, alright, what are we, so what are we missing, I feel like we're missing something, we've got stuff from pipeline, right, yeah, we've got our rasterization state, our depth sensor state, our color states, all of the things. Uh, we have this guy, we have this guy, but we don't quite understand, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Right, none of the, a lot of the stuff did not make any sense to me. Like, this crazy, hard-coded, like, this is the handle! Like, all, all right, like, I don't, I don't get that at all. Seems crazy. I don't know. Man. Yeah, we've we've already we we did this, right? We have an asset. We have an asset called map. We have an asset loader. Like, where's the magic that draws the stuff? <laughs> um. Add system. It's, it's in here, isn't it? It's in here. That's what we haven't done yet. Alright, so we've got some sort of process loaded tile maps function. And it is a system. Alright. Let's uh let's do that then, I guess, right? So we've got we've got our plugin here. We added our asset. Let's uh let's add a system. And, uh, yeah. Process box files. Dot system. Alright, where did that come from? Process loaded tile maps. Let's try under the map module. Yes, here it is. Let's kind of, that's under our map module. Okay, so let's go ahead then. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to say map colon colon. And that's where, that's where we're going to find our process box tiles system. So there's a, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on there. So we've got our pipeline. Box tile chunks, etc. Where's our, where's our map? What is this stuff and where is it? Graph builder. It should be part of pipeline, right? Yes, it is part of pipeline. Alright. What was all of this up here? You know, building Vox tile plugins? Yeah, that's all about building that uh Vox tile plugin. Alright, yeah. I'm sure you are still around, Wolfie. Good to hear from you, though. Yep. With all the COVID and everything, it's hard to, uh... Yeah, gotta educate children yourself in these days. So that's, uh, it's a fair amount of work. And a very important, uh, duty. Alright, so what are we, what are we up to? Yeah, I'm still just trying to figure out... 
Hmm. All right, where did our where did our map go? All right, here's map. We have a bunch of stuff to find in our map. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead, and we can now. Hub FN process. Not the loaded tile map. What were we process? We were going to process some fox tiles, right? Yes, process some of them box tiles. That's what we're gonna do. Now what? Now we've got a um, mute man, man. Let's, I'm just gonna keep doing this until we start until we use them, I guess, right? So we have an asset server. Need assets? Yes, yes, we do for our text rounds. Right? We have an asset server, uh, comma, right? And we have a mute date. This is for our local, it's local. Map resource provider state. What the heck is that? I don't. I don't even know, man. This is under, it's still inside of map stuff, yeah? Alright. So sure, man. Have a, need some sort of a pub product map resource provider date. And then what? Now we have this map event reader. Uses an event reader for an asset event app. All right, now I want to drive the fault. I import that from the prelude because it's there. Can import that from the prelude because it's there. All right. This is now inside of our mod map. Where are? There we go. So we've got some event readers and some other stuff. All right. Looks good. So now we have we've got that going. We need to have some sort of event reader, which yeah, yeah. We just we just did that. All right, so we want commands. We'll go from Prelude. Res. Yeah, very Prelude. It's for our resource, I guess. We want uh, asset server res assets. All right. And go ahead and grab that from a Prelude. Now we have a local. What do you call it? This guy. Local. Alright. Alright, now we got some sort of map events. Now what? We could say res mute what? Assets map. Alright, sure. I mean, we do have a map, so... Do you want it to be mutable? Sure, why not? We'll figure it out, right? So... That's map... That's not map events. No, not map events. We need something... We need a different type for map events. Different type. Alright, so we want a res... Event... Asset... Event... For our map. Alright, there's our comma. 
All right. Now we can say mute maps is a res mute for assets and map. Mute meshes going to be a red mute, right, for our assets, and then mesh. Now what? We have mute materials. Again, red mute assets. Color. Here it. All right. So there's some of the stuff that we're probably gonna have to play with. Because uh, uh, I know I was giving this. I was trying to use a texture atlas. That seemed like a reasonable thing to do. So it'll be. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at the examples and stuff. And codes. And figure out like how do we how do we use that? All right. So we've got a. Uh, We've got some mute query. I'm gonna query. Um, close that off. Hit a comma there just to make it good. How about entity? At. What do we want here? Tiled map center. I don't know nothing about no tiled map centers, man. Right? We, we do need a handle on a map. That is true. We need a handle on a map. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, so let's, um, I don't know. For now, we'll just go with what's what he's got going. Yeah, let's just, we'll just, we'll just go with that. I still need to figure out why things are done the way. I want to fight too. We've got our U32, we've got our handle color material, we've got our transform. Alright, so let's just... Yeah, man, let's grab, grab some stuff. Or uh, heavy utils, I guess. I'm gonna import that there. Import that there. But handle, I thought we should have already imported. Entity query. Yeah, just. Give me one of those. Import prelude. Import prelude. Import prelude. Okay. Looking good. We got some bevy prelude. All right. It's just, um, having all our crazy imports. Wow. See, we're starting to... A lot of stuff from Bevy Prelude. All right. That's fine. Okay. Very good. Very good. I mean, we don't, we don't return anything either. Mm, we don't return anything. Alright, events is not found. Okay. In the scope. Under for map events. And 166. There we go. Huh. All right. Well, where is he bent at?
I don't know, man. Let's, let's just try in here. Vince! Um. Now we, got, now we got some bevy ECS and stuff. We do the same thing that we were doing before. Now we can say what bevy ECS. Yeah, that's that and that. that. All right. Now what? Now we've got some bevy utils for our hash map, and we've got a uh, got query. There is bent in here. My goodness. All right. So where is he bent at then? Why do you do stuff for? Maybe I messed up. I think we did mess up. Oh. I think this should say events plural. Alright, then we hit Alt Enter and hit Import and get it from the Prelude. Alright, so now we can go back up into it. Yep! Yeah, see, there's our events right there, and. I don't know, we'll just uh, do that for now. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Alt, etc. Right, we got some good looking stuff there. Right. Don't need that. No, oh, if I got rid of weird stuff like that. Oh. Let me get rid of that. Okay. Oof! Alright. Method not found in that. Why didn't you find dot system in that? All right, so this is showing me that I've done something. This is inside of our plugin, right? So we can go to our plugin and say, yo, plugin, what are you important? Prelude star. Yeah, so there's something or other I guess we could import to get the... into for each system seems to be into query system well it's got to be one of those two things right that's going to be inside of our plugins at the very top here right yeah or we can uh we can just say uh, use bevy all right, and we can have a little semicolon in there. Some preludes. Got a uh, like that. We got some render. And sprite. Clean stuff up. Awesome. Yeah. 
Ugh, just gonna try to figure some stuff out. What do we got here? Into for each system. So we've tried that. We didn't like it. All right, fine. Into weary system. Try that. Yeah. All right. So he likes that one. All right. So now what? Now we have some sort of a field is never red. Uh, since when do I care about whether these fields are red? You know? I'll figure out what the appropriate permissions and stuff and package management things are later. Because, uh, yeah. Right now we're trying to kind of get stuff to work, trying to understand some basics. You know? I got time to figure out, like, to try to perfect a bunch of weird stuff like that. Yeah. I think nobody got time for that. Alright, so, what am I doing? Under map? Yeah, so this map guy, this, this function is probably where it all comes together. All of the crazy stuff that we did. Alright. So I don't know about... Alright, so we've got some changed maps. And we can get a... He wants to build a hash set of change maps. Why? Because then we're going to go... Because then we're going to go inside of our e event stuff. Into our map events. And then we're going to figure out what happened. Alright. And then we're going to we're gonna record it all inside of our hash set. I guess we're looking for unique maps that have changed. So, so, can maps change right now? Well, we're looking at asset events like created, modified, and removed. So I'm going to go with, yeah. And that's, maybe we do want that. So, let's mute changed maps. All right? Is equal to what? We got some sort of a hash. That's colon, colon, open thing. What? Candle. Map. Close, close, colon, colon, new. Yeah. Talking about? Yeah, give me some hash sets. I'm surprised they didn't have their own uh, bevy hash set using that same sort of random state thing that they took from the other gizmo. That's okay. We're not going to worry about it. So we've got event for each event in state. Alright, we're using state now, so we don't need this underscore. Hooray! For each event in state dot map event reader dot iterator, basically, right? Our, our iter. And then we are going to ampersand here map events. Let's go ahead then, and we can remove the um, uh, that there. So where did our map events go? All right, looks good. Got some sort of map event. Now, now we have, now we can match events. <sighs> All right, man, I'm uh, sleepy. All right, let me get some, get some caffeine, get some sugar. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go along the day, man. We're gonna, we're gonna figure some stuff out. We're gonna make some things happen. We are going to, uh, we're going to get some cool stuff working. Mm. Hmm. All right. Just, uh. What are we doing, man? Yay, stimulants. Indeed, wolf form. Woo, good to see you. Alright, so we got some match events. We're just gonna... We're just gonna match some events, I guess, right? First, create it, right? Then what? Uh, ha handle. I guess that's part of the pattern... That's part of the pattern matching. Pattern matching is super cool. Like the pattern matching very much. Change the maps now. Can... 
insert this uh, ooh, star handle. So we're going to dereference the handle, and we're going to uh, insert the thing that was dereferenced from the handle into our changed maps uh, hash set. And it looks like, yeah, we're kind of, we're looking for these. Uh, we're giving it handle maps. So when we dereference a handle, I'm guessing handle was. Yeah, you just all right. We're just gonna dereference it though. Thought maybe we're getting back some sort of uh, thought there'd been an ampersand there or something. Whatever. I don't know, man. We got some sort of asset event. Yeah, and now we're going to get some modified handle. All right. And then what? Oh, yeah. throw that stuff around. We can say what changed maps. Uh, insert right and we're going to again pass in a dereferenced hand all right so far it looks like the same sort of same sort of things are happening yep all right so now and we got some sort of asset event removed and again we need the handle Let's see here. If the mesh was modified and removed in the same update, ignore the modification, right? If, like, ignore the modification events are ordered. Uh, ignore the modification. End of sentence. Events are ordered, so future modification events are okay. Alright, changed maps dot remove handle this is like uh just in case it was there sort of a thing i guess and uh i'm noticing that we're not dereferencing it this time at least not in the code i'm reading this guy seems like a little mm, no right kind of weird here we found a handle for unknown all right, let's uh, throw a star in there. Wow. Okay, so let's, uh, I don't know, what does, what does Rust think? Check with the Rust compiler. Mismatch type, it agrees. That's, wow. For which one? Oh, I, I expected some stuff, but I got a different -y thing. Ah, all right. Let's, uh... There we go. Let's have that semicolon in there. Let's see what it thinks about that. Interesting. So it definitely appears to compile and work just fine. So why is IntelliJ? Oh, I'm not gonna worry about it. So okay, so we've got uh, so we've got that trailing. One, two, three. Alright. Uh, does that make sense? That should have been this for loop up here. Yeah, so this here should be our function. And then this here should be our pub mod map. This is this is indeed where we want to be. Still inside of our function. Alright. All right, so now we can let mute new meshes is equal to a hash map colon colon open, right? And then what? We want to say handle map. We got some new ones of them. Now we got some. I got some lists of an interesting looking tuple here. Of U32, U32. What is this? Handle. Mesh. Alright, close angle bracket. Close that bracket. Close that bracket. And that bracket, I think. So then we can say new. Sort of the idea 
there. Ah, that is the problem. Yes. One too many close angle brackets there. Good to go. All right. Yeah, so we've got some crazy hash map now. Or we've got a hand, like a, what is this, referenced, references to handles that contain maps. And that's the key. And the values for our hash map is this crazy sort of vector looking dude. All right, so it's a list of uh, list of these tuples. All right. Now for changed map, right? In changed map. Dot fighter. So all of those updated map things that we just got and put into our hash map or to our hash set over here. Now we're just going to iterate through each one, and we are going to do something about the fact that uh, the changes have occurred. I guess, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now what? Now we got this let map that's equal to what map? So now I want to change maps up here to just be a maps. So now we've got maps dot get mutable instance, right? Of what? Of our changed map. And then we're going to unwrap that, assuming that that is good to go and everything is okay. So we're going to do a for loop here now. One, two, three. <laughs> Mute materials map. And boom. That's what we're looking for from our query at the moment, it seems, right? Yep, so we're going to we're gonna change the name of our query. Be like, yes, we use this query now. Excellent. Good way of marking off the stuff that we're actually using. Right. So we can, uh, what? We're going to iterate on this. This is for tile set in map dot map dot tiles. What is, what is this? I don't even know. Map dot. We don't even have. We don't got none of that. What is uh? What's in here, man? Map dot map. <laughs> That's crazy. I got no mapped up maps up tiles. But we did we did something different -y, right? Yeah, we did something a little different -y. But what is what is this what is this map? There we go. That's my that's my map struct that we wrote. Right, where we looked at theirs and we were just like, I don't know, man, but your map struct. Your map struct don't make no sense. Oh, when he goes into map.map, .map, dude, that's the tiled map. That's his integration into the tiled um, sort of library thing that he's got going on, right? So that's re that's why we don't have that's why we don't have that. First. Right? Uh, maybe we I don't know. For now, yeah, let's go. Let's go grab some meshes. Know what we need, man. I have no idea. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead. We're gonna add some things that he does have though, like meshes, for now, right? And this is this is where probably where we get our weird vec. Yeah, this is where we get our weird vector of U32, U32, and mesh. All right. Oh, wow, so we got so we got that. Um, what else could we get? I don't think I want. I didn't want layers before. <laughs> and what did what did layers have anyway right so he had a vector of layer and layer just has something called tile set layer a vector of those and then tile set layer has tile size hunks and a tile set GUID huh all right so hmm and what do we need? 
Alright, but we shortcutted it. Right, because we just want to have a vector of chunks. And that's it. Right. So we've got we've got some different -y stuff going on. We can go ahead and we can keep our meshes for now, I guess. Right. Layers, we don't got no layers, we just have a vector of chunks. That's fine. And we have uh some tile tile size vector? I don't know, man. We got it, but it, there. I'm not gonna worry about image folder. I kind of like the idea of there being like. Yeah, we smoke that texture atlas, don't we? I think so. And we can project ortho and unproject ortho. Hmm. I'll whip. Cast in. Mm hmm. Tile size keeping track of them. This is where we're gonna. This is where we're gonna figure a lot of stuff out. All right. In terms of like, you know, where our differences are really gonna come into play. All right. So we can't just we can't just copy paste this stuff at all. Yeah. Think about what to do properly. This is inside of our new meshes. We've got some mute materials map, right? In should have been this guy here. Very right. Yep. Yeah. Then what for tile sets? We're not looking at tile set. So what was he expecting to get out of a tile set? Oh. Yeah, so we've got so we've got some work to do. We have to figure out okay, what is, what is the end result of that? Right? Materials mapped up insert. It's all from our queries, all from other stuff. Support multiple meshes and single entity. With, with multiple materials. Change this once it does. Alright, so... Yeah. Alright, so I think we've got... we got some studying to do, I think. we got some studying to do. I think we're going to have to go over... I think before we can really do this. We're going to we're gonna have to take some time to understand... You know, what's going on. Sort of a thing here, yeah. Cause uh, yeah, we can we can loop through this guy all day long, and we can play around with some stuff. It's like, like what are we doing? Um, we want we kind of want to get something simple built. Was uh, that was the hope? I think it's time to start trying to play around with uh, with getting resources even in here to begin with. You know, to, to start doing queries on them, to start running systems on them, to start figuring out what's going on. Uh, we might want to take the time to organize our code a little better to make sure that we are kind of good to go. Sort of a thing, right? Um... Yeah, um... Alright, yeah, still a fair amount of work ahead of us. Alright, that's what I'm getting at. I need a quick little break here. That's okay, I shall be back shortly. I don't even think I want to pause the stream sort of a thing, right? That's sort of shortly. So, uh... BRB! Is what I'm saying here. 
and I will see you guys soon. All right, here we go. I'm back. Look at that. That's uh, not too bad. Pretty seamless there. All right. Let's uh, get back to uh, back to our code and music. Let's do some project organizing now. So let's, let's throw a bunch of these things in different files. I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment this stuff out here, which is uh, fine. All right, and then uh, we can. Uh, what what sort of thing did we uh or change the engine? Like it's fun. We'll let that be. What else? And um query. Query, right? And we can go ahead then and just whatever whatever. Not worry about any of that stuff. Or now. What do you think is an error? That thing? It's on error. Okay. Alright, well have fun grading math, Wolfie. Alright, we got some people saying some stuff today. Daily maintenance. Keep stuff maintained and go out of way. Huh? Ah. Sounds pretty cool. Right, yep. Look that. And look at that. Alright, sweet. So, let's get some stuff done. Alright. So yeah, so that compiles, everything's looking pretty and happy. Let's uh let's take a look. What are we, what are we thinking? What do we want? Is this like part of our bevy eye module? I think so, right? And uh what are we gonna call it? I think we're calling it the Vox Tiles. That uh that seems like that makes sense. And then uh so what can we do here, yeah? We can say things like uh pub pub crate, pub crate? That we're doing here, pub mod, mod, right? Yeah, so let's um, we can do uh, let's go ahead for now. Let's do a pub mod, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call it that uh, the box tile, right? A box tile, pub mod, box tile. Very. Cool. This right here is part of our art plugin, which we're not gonna worry too too much about right now for a second. And then we are going to come in here, I think, and we're going to create a new Rust file. That's going to be called our bot. Alright. Uh, yes, we can go in on that. We can get stuff. I think that we're going to want... He's going to get his own... Um, what do you call it? I want to give him his own directory in here. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and make a new package. And we're going to call it box files. Alright, because yeah, he's inside of there, and that's what's going on there. And so what type of stuff do we want? Box tiles are right. So he's going to do some sort of like a pub mod for now, right? Remember? And so we're going to do what? Pipeline. Pipeline's a good place to start. Throw our make one into there. Okay. And then what does that mean? In here, we can say on a new Rust file called Pipeline. Alright, yep, add that. Looks good. Okay, now. Back to Vox Tiles RF. 
we actually already have most of Vox Tiles RS defined how we want it. We just need to kind of come into our main, we're gonna clean out our main, we're gonna organize our stuff better, so I'm like less flipping up and down like a crazy person. And we can just that was that was not the desired placement. Okay, so we're gonna come in here, move that move to the right. There we go. And uh, we can close that guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, we kind of just whoa, what just, what just happened? Oh my goodness. All right, yeah. So let's just take a look and see what we got. We've got our main here, and we want to have we're playing around with box tiles here, so we can go ahead and close others for. Now. And we want so we already have our pub mod type line. Okay. Here is what. Here we can do, we can do this. Now right? oh, we also want yes, use pipeline star. We know we've already got. We're defining pipeline star. That's fine. We can use that. Uh, what does that mean? Now we're gonna come back down. We don't need pipeline. We don't need map. We don't need much else. All right, but we do want our box tile plugin. I Right. The other funny thing was that taking the original this sort of this this box tile map component. That's under the map. That's under the map guys. Let's, let's do that. We're just gonna keep doing that. Alright, so now we're gonna just do like what? We're gonna do for now a pub on map. Alright. Organize this stuff a bit. Yes, now what? I can come in here and I can say a new, give me a new Rust file. So it's going to be called map. Great, looks good. Now, what, what can we start doing with these? Well, here's map, right? We should just be able to come in here, sort of take all of the maps. I think it should be this. And just we just put it in here. All right, that looks that's good. Do like a control alt o sort of thing. Yeah, we got our hash set up here now, and that's fine. And I kind of wanted, yeah, I was gonna add in uh, the map components here for now. Just be like, yeah, we're doing. And uh, here's kind of in there. We can uh, I don't know, bring him up kind of to the top and be like, yeah, it's our, it's our map and stuff things. We got some maps. What else do we need? We need some sort of texture atlas. Import that. That'd be really. That's what we were. That's what we were hoping to use. We were hoping to reuse that texture atlas. Texture atlas. Good. That was the um. That's the thing, right? But it could be didn't use it. Something else going on. Maybe with tiled. Maybe maybe tiled libraries that for giving him things that he wanted to use instead. Where we don't have that problem. Right? Of trying to integrate with some tiled library also. Just want to integrate with a bevy. We want to have some good rendering code with bevy. That's easy. Yes, yeah, so we've got our we've got our we've got our map components and stuff, and that all looks. I think yeah, we're starting to clean this up. We have box tile plugin, I think, already over here. Here he is, with our box tile plugin. Now, what's what's this crazy stuff? Probably part of this is that's from our graph builders. Which should be inside of our pipelines. Yes. Which pipelines the should be mostly Yeah, we're just kinda of playing around, we're looking around. We got our graph builder and stuff, right? And then we have we have this guy. Um, did it. Congratulations. 
Um, boom that for now, you know that. So we can come back here, okay, into pipeline. We can, uh, we can paste, we can paste what we've got there. And we can start taking a look and taking a C and, alright, do we have, do we have everything? Is everything happy in here? It's good so far. We can, uh, we can keep that there. That's our pipeline. Right? So we don't need a Vox... We don't need our Vox Tile plugin anymore. We already put that inside of somewhere else. Uh, yeah, we just, we just don't need that anymore. This here is going to be inside of our... What? We got some sort of bevy I, a mod model, right? And then what? We could say pub mod. Oh, we already have it. It's part of our bevy I. Right. We already have it. It's part of our bevy I. What is this one? This one's tile type. Okay, for fun now, to keep this compiling, right? We should be able to say something like, you know, use. Bevi, and then what? You want to say Vox Tiles map tile type. We should be able to hit Control Alt O to help IntelliJ hopefully kind of reorder our stuff for us and kind of see what's going on in here. What's your malfunction? A type named Bevy has already been defined in this module. Alright, see, that's what I thought. Now you're better one, right? So our main is getting is, is the relatively small again, which is good. We want to keep main looking very small and cute. That is the idea. So now we have our Vox Tiles fragments, right? That's fine, because now we can just move him up there. And uh don't search for references, just refactor, just move it, that's all I want. Just, just move it. All right. Let's um, yeah. Just, just, just do it. Just do it. And then, uh, okay. Vert and frag. Yes, yes. Everything there looks happy and now what? Unresolved import. Yes. Because why? Because we tried getting something from a place. That doesn't exist. This right here should also say crate, by the way. Okay. Now what? Now we can make that crate. Yeah, let's make let's make that kind of our big we can make that like a and like come in here and say crate heavy. Right? And here we have this. And from there we have that and look at how my professional and rusty some of this is starting to starting to look already. That's just fantastic. Yeah. That if and no. I think you're I think you're just being confused. Alright, bundle, bundle. We don't we don't know about no bundles. What's a bundle? This is getting annoying again. One of those things where then you should have been able to tell me what a bundle is. Yeah, bundle. Here we go. Bundle. Right there, man. Yeah. I think intelligence should tell me that I didn't know where the bundle was. Alright, because now we have some unused import, right? Because we've uh, reorganized some things a little bit. And that is fine. We just sort of catch that over there. Looks good. Hmm. What else? Transform. Transform is not used. Okay. All right. And then what? Um, texture atlas. Texture atlas is not used here. It's fine. What else? Maybe those those two things. Control save, control nine. Hmm. All right. The 
I think now we're going to start wanting to use for reference. Take a look at some of the bevy source code, right? I'm going to be like, yo, bevy, how, do you, how, do you, how did you get these texture atlases working in the first place? You know, yo, bevy, how, how did you get how did you get sprite rendering going? How, how, how does this work? How does that work? Tell me, yo, bevy. And then uh, and I think from, from there we can... We can... Uh, we're trying to throw a because I don't know we start throwing resources at this amp, right? I guess I guess we need um, I guess we need some chunks. I don't know. Um, so right now, all right. So so here's what we can do for fun, right? Uh, yeah, let's um. Let's see what we can do. Hang on. So, am I? Okay. I think I was. I was... What are you doing? Yes. So, the whole point of this thing appears to be right, that we want. What do we want? We want some stuff going, man. Type of stuff. Yeah, we want we want some sort of map. I think we want to auto-generate a map, don't we? Maybe. Just uh, we could we could randomly generate a map. It doesn't even have to be random. Just uh, we'll uh, we'll keep our map simple, All right? We're gonna basically we're gonna say like if it's an edge, make it a wall. Otherwise, make it a floor. That's uh, that sounds like a, a super simple map generator to me. All right, so let's uh, let's play with that. And then, uh, then right now our maps will feature a single chunk. And then, uh, yeah, so then we can we can play with that, and see what we can get going. All right, so let's um, oof, let's uh, I guess we can get rid of all of this stuff, right? At the very least, we should be able to. I'll, I'll probably keep one and comment it out, right? And then we can uh, we can get rid of the rest of them. All right, so there's uh, there's that semicolon, but it's funny because we're just gonna move it up here, anyways. Because uh, yeah, and then we can just sort of. All right. So now that is nice and taken care of. Now all sorts of all sorts of unused variables, huh? Yeah. Oh, we don't we don't use tile type no more. No, we'll, we probably will soon enough. So I'm just I'm, I'm gonna leave it. Anything else that uh, we don't use? Let's see here. Scale. Yeah, we don't we don't use scale anymore. It's it's fine. We'll just uh, so our map size will be like uh what the number of. Piles, basically, right? Width and height. That's it. That's the size of the map. All right. <laughs> so here we got some sort of texture atlas handle. Which, uh, yeah, this this here looks pretty fun and good. So we're just going to do all of this stuff. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you what. So we could just. We just get rid of all of that. And it's gonna be like... Now you have even more unused imports! No! <sighs> Alright, yeah, I guess, uh... I feel like we do still want... The... Yeah. We have, to figure, we have to figure out how to make that work. Right? Figure out how to make stuff work. All right, so we're. I don't know. I think we're we're, we're giving into terrorism of the of the the warnings here. <laughs> I think yeah, that's fine. We'll just we'll leave that the way that it is. I'm not care about everything else is like you know, leave me alone, man. This is uh this is pretty good. So we've got um. 
Yeah, that's that's what we want. There's our from grid. There's our texture atlas. You know, so what are we saying here? We said uh, texture atlas is add texture atlas. I mean, that's that's pretty sweet, right? Yeah, that's um pretty sweet. I like that. And what we're we gonna add next? Some sort of a map ass asset. Maybe, right? All right. Maps is moot. What is this? Assets. We have some sort of a we have some sort of map here, right? This is uh yeah. There you go. Give me one of those. All right, and then another one. Is uh. How do we make new map? I don't know. This guy's got some cool from grid thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. But what? We're gonna say so we got a texture from a thing, right? Now what? We wanna say like Atlas handle add texture things, right? This right here is our res mute assets, right? This, this is map plural. Right? Right, so you can say let map is equal to uh, map. Right now, what does, what does map want? What does map wants to be happy in life? Right? Also, wants meshes? Do you want to give it meshes? I don't even know, man. What sort of meshes does a map really need to have? Tile size? Don't we, don't we already know? Like, if tile size doesn't mean what I think it means, I can figure this out, right? So, back. Yeah, give me some back to new. Uh, what? 16 dot. Um, uh, 16 dot. Alright, yeah, just, just, give some, just give me some of that. What else here? We got some map. Map width one. All right, and then we have a uh, chunks, right? Or we need to give it. Um, you can give it a vec bang, right? Of a uh, of what is this chunk? Right, we're just gonna give it a. We're just gonna give it chunk. What is chunk? Go ahead and import chunk. Alright, then we say what? Let chunk equal to. I don't know, man. Chunk. Now, what does chunk want? It wants tiles. It wants what everyone wants. <laughs> it wants tiles. Alright, so we're just gonna. Oh, there you go, man. There's chunk. It takes in some tiles. Like wait, where did tiles come from? Here's here's tiles, you ready? We're gonna say uh let tiles be equal to what? Um see how how do how, how do we do that? Say tiles. There's a way, I'm sure, to be Yo know, Rust Book. Rust that Rust Book? I don't know, like a new up and array, man. A uh, rust, rust array. Then we had to like do some arrays and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I need right there. All right, that looks good. That looks perfect. Make that happen, right? Now, yeah, we should be able to come in here, right? We want this. And this is gonna say what? Yeah, we need a tile type. How many tile types? 1024 of them. Oh, well what's our default? What's our default tile type? Floor. Right? And then what? 1024. Semicolon. And that's it, man. Right? Boom. That's what we're talking about. And now what? Now... And we can give, we just give that to chunks. 
You just give that to Chunks right away. I think, right? So we just go, boom. There you go. There you go, Chunks. There you go, Mr. Chunk. There is your tile. Alright, so we know then that all Chunks are 32 by 32. Just a fact. And, you know, so we may also want to have, like, a... You know, so, so I made Floor the default. Maybe Floor is not the default. Maybe, like, the Abyss or something is, like, the default. What is the Abyss? It's, like, you know, the nothing type of rendering nothingness. Um, which will help us, I think, to make rooms that are smaller than 32 by 32. That's the, that's the point of that, right? But for now, what are we going to do? We're going to say something like... I kind of want to do like a four, what, X in zero, 32, right? I think it's, it's something like that in rest, right? For Y in zero dot dot 32, and I'm assuming it's inclusive and exclusive in rest, right? And now we can say something like what? If, uh, right, if, what, x is zero, right, or y is zero, or if what, if x is equal to 31, or if y is equal to 31. Uh, I want to do like a chunk dot set. What do you mean? You mean no suggestions? Don't mess with me. This right here is very explicit about what I can do with my chunks. Alright. So yeah. So we're just going to do that. I'm going to say x, y. This is, uh... And then what? We want some sort of a uh, tile type uh, wall. That's it. That's, it. That's what we want. I think I got used to another program. That's what that was about. Now, your your math function probably is going to be that it's not mutable. Well... There, it's mutable now. You're not borrow. Immutable. I, I, I let I let you mutate it. So there. So there. For loop expression has unnecessary parentheses. Really? How, how do we do ranges in Rust? <laughs> uh, Rust book. Hey. The control flow. Right? We got, okay, so if expressions, I think we did if okay. Right? Yeah, we did our if okay. What about my for loops? Yeah. I did my for loops. Good. Loop. Down. I guess it's saying that I don't need this in the range either. All right, sure, I don't care, man. Like whatever. Like whatever. All right, sweet, so we did it. We did it. Now, uh, why is why is this? Thing? Do I need it? Is that what makes that happen? And if I uh, I don't know, do I need to do I just get rid of that? I don't know, man. Just... Give me some, just give me some chunky in my, give me some chunk in my, uh, vec. In my vectors. That's what I want. I want some chunk in my vectors. All right. So what else do we have for map? Tell me map. Nothing else? I don't know. I feel like maybe this guy should have, you know, kind of just based on what was in map. Right? Where's, where's map at? 
Alright. Yeah, based on the crazy stuff that was in map. Find like image folders and some other weird stuff, right? And he's got some sort of tile set layers. In each tile set layer, it has chunks and it has some sort of tile set GUID. Alright, which sounds very much like it's trying to render some something or other, right? So it's like, what do, we, what do we want? What do we want? I think we want to have some sort of a texture thing. Where we got our handles at, man? Where are we throwing handles at these days? Not in math, things. Yeah, not, not in math. Where, where, where do we put it? In our tiled map components? I don't know. Yeah, this guy, he wants the he wants the text rounds. Right, so with him. We've got some sort of transform. Right, I'm not sure if we have like a what? Globals? Fine and good. We have some sort of we have our first sort of dungeon generator. Okay, which is fine. Which is uh what do we need to do? We need to give map to something somewhere, don't we? To what? To our to our Vox tile map. Yeah, alright. So, uh, yeah, so we, we just want the one chunk inside of our, inside of our map. And then we are going to do something like, uh, like what? Um... We kind of like that, right? But we're just gonna, we're just gonna say... Spawn. Is that what we're doing? Spawning stuff? Maybe. I don't even know, man. Okay, so, we want to have some sort of a box... Tile map components. Okay. And we we already we've already implemented the default for it. Okay, so we can just go ahead then and say default default. That kind of will uh, that will help us out. Okay. okay. What do we want to give? It? We want to give it some sort of a map asset, right? Map asset. Handle to a map. How did we get that? How did we get a texture atlas handle? You could say, okay, so let map handle, right? Is equal to map dot add. Map. I think that should get us our map handle. So then we could say map handle. All right. And then what? And then we want we want that texture atlas, man. Texture atlas. Give it to me. Give me that. Give me that texture atlas. I probably need the handle. Handle. All right. We want that texture atlas handle in there. And then the transform, we're just going to leave that as the default sort of uh, origin transform. And we're going to see how how well that works. Uh, Alright, so we can, hit, uh, we can hit save there. We can try to compile it, see what happens. I'm really afraid to try to run it, I'll tell you that much. I'm, 
I'm confident that, like, I don't know, we're probably going to get some crazy exceptions, all sorts of other stuff's going to happen, right? Uh, you know, if anything, it just, it just won't say anything, right? Nothing will happen. Sort of a thing, right? So let's, uh, let's figure it out. Let's, uh, let's hit shift F10 there. Oh! Woo! Woo! Resource does not exist! What are you talking about? What resource doesn't exist? Right? Got all these internal calls and stuff. We got some macros and things. Something or other has failed, has failed. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's just humanity's failing. Oh my goodness. What happened? Well, to be fair, a major thing I think that happened is that. But, but, what did we do? What did we forget to do? Yeah? What did we forget to do? We think we forgot to register our plugin. Yeah. Probably need to register a plugin. Let's, uh, let's figure that out, right? So we've got our uh, box tiles here, right? Uh, this right here, he's got a he's got a box tile plugin, which uh, which seems fine and good. So I think inside of our art plugin, what we will do. That's inside of you, right? Yeah. I want to add to you. I want to add some sort of plugin. All right, cool. So, what plugin are we adding? Uh, let's see, how did we add this other one, right? Add default plugins, add plugin, art plugin. So, we just need to do like, what is, what is this? Box tile plugin. Alright, box file plugin. That's that. Roll not. Looks like IntelliJ helped us out with the uh, with the import there, so that is good. Let's see. Um, you. Oh, we have great model. Ah, that's that, right? So this here is more of a... Yeah. Yeah. That's... That way things are kind of more relative. Damn. I'm gonna throw some relativity up in there. I'm gonna do a... Control on own. Make that all happy. Uh, yeah, one more time. One more time for luck. <laughs> All right, look at that. I see what I was hoping for. Kind of. Hooray for a black screen. This is, uh, <laughs> of course, this, this happens a lot in the life of the graphics, uh, programmer. Which is, uh, which is fine. Got ourselves a blank screen. Congratulations. Woo! No, but no errors. Everything looks happy and good. Um, uh, yeah, we, we, we told it about our map. And it was, it was happy, and it took it. Uh, I guess we have to figure out how to draw it now. <laughs> Yay, black screen. Yep. That's uh that's fine and good. Man, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure some stuff out. Earth, man. That's some default for chunk components? Oh man. What's going on with chunk components? Yeah, so it seems like a lot of magic happens on some chunk components. I think that's where that's where we're gonna need to spend some some time. All right, so that's inside of map.rs. Sure, all right. Yeah, so we'll just uh, we'll figure it out. All right, so we've got our vox tile map component. 
so he he knows about maps already. It's fine. That's kind of maps are like the big container -y abstract notion ideas. They just kind of have like a vector of chunks. That's it. You know, you kind of add to them as you need to, take away from them as you. Thing I think. We're just sort of what are we doing? Right? Gotta think about how we how we want all this stuff in our. You gotta manage manage a lot of data. Sort of the idea here, right? Right, so we've got... But now I think we need to do some chunk. I think that's part of what that function down there is all about. Our little our little magic function that we haven't uh, that we haven't finished yet with processing our tiles. Right? It's about creating these uh, chunk components and registering them with Bevy to render the chunk components. Right now we can do a what? A pub. Rocked. Punk. Component. There we go. Chunk. Chunky component. Excellent. Pub. Chunk. Tile. Lost. That's from our pipeline. But what was in our Vox tile chunk? Nothing. Nothing. Nobody knows what this is. All right. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll, we're about to find out, right? Uh, that's what we're doing. All right. I think we can get rid of main for now. Main is doing its thing. It's happy. All right. We don't need. We don't need main. We do have these. We got this Vox tile chunk. And, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's what our chunk is for some reason. Any sense to me yet? Well, we're gonna try to figure it out, though, right? We're gonna try, we got some pub main. Pass. Main. Main pass, alright. Main pass is a, that's a bevy thing, right? We need some sort of a material. For now, we'll, we'll, we're just gonna go with it, right? We have a we have a color material. We are. I mean, I'm, again, I'm really hoping I can use the texture atlas thing, which you guys not use it. That's fun. Just gonna figure it out, right? I got some pub render pipeline. We can render pipelines. Why is why is one singular as the other plural? Well, do not know. The yeah, let's start from the prelude. Prelude action. We've got pub raw raw drawing stuff sounds good. We've got pub mesh handle. Right, and then what we have hub transform transform. We have hub global transform a global transform. Alright, so that's that's all the stuff that's in here. I what a draw in it. Uh, let's grab it from have you pray prelude? Eh? Cool. So there's all there's look at all that look at all that prelude stuff. I'm getting to the point now where it's like just just like about needing to import stuff from prelude. All right, and that includes this guy. I don't need none of that, right? What's that? what was his deal anyways? Uh this is from our crate, but also from from what? This is actually from like super. Alright, super pipeline. Box tile chunk. And then we've got a uh, bevy render. Render some stuff with our main pass here. Yeah. Alright, that looks good. My boy now. Alright, so. 
Can we get rid of that? Control Alt O sort of thing. All right, let's see what we got. Looking prettier now. All right. All right. You're going to derive a bundle. Drive a bundle for our chunk component. And what? We could impl a default for chunk component. We can do some fn default where we will return self. And as and here we go to make self. This is for, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a default, right? Yeah. So we can say chunk box file map chunk default. We can say draw equal to a draw. And we can say is transparent true. So I'm not sure about that. Maybe it is. Figure it out. But otherwise, we want the default. Default. Alright, we're done with the draw, so on to the main path. Or we will or we will pass in main pass. And then we'll say mesh colon handle the default. Just a default mesh? Sure, why not? Sure, alright. Material. Handle. Default. Alright, and now we have some sort of a render pipeline. Render pipelines. I'm calling it from. What is this? Pipelines. Back. Render pipeline. Oh, that's me. Oh, um, okay. No, what? Yeah, like that. Yeah. 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 There we go. And for fun, we're just gonna, we're gonna continue on for a moment, right? We're gonna say transform. Uh, we want the default transform please and then uh, for the global transform yes we want the uh default one of those as well please all right now back to this render pipeline which uh it's a real function here buddy was it not imported all right this is part of bevy render okay bevy Right in there. Uh, boom, and then what? And pipeline. All right. That there looks pretty good. All right. Specialize. Woo! All right. Now, what did we call our crazy? Oh, we have some. We have a crazy handle somewhere, don't we? Yeah. Under our, what do you call it? Under our pipeline code, you know? Yeah, so we're, we're going to import this guy into our map. Right? We've already got some stuff from our from Super Pipeline. Let's, uh, let's just keep adding, adding stuff here. That looks good. And then we can say, yes, please just use this guy here. We're going to call it, it's a specialized thing. And this is our Vox pile, pipeline handle. So we'll figure out, like, what the deal is with these magic numbers. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't, I don't know, man. And then, uh, yeah, so we got some specialized stuff up in here. 
let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. And that. Get some funky grooves going. Yeah. All them funky groups. That's what we're gonna do. All right. So we've got some pipe line specializations. All right. And we have some dynamic binding. Back bang. What are we doing? The dynamic binding. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. Yeah, all right. So let's, uh, let's do that. We probably want to import this wherever that is. We don't have it. All right. So we're just gonna kind of write that. Over. That looks good. So we're gonna say bind group two. We're gonna say binding. All right, binding zero. And this is supposed to be for. The transform. All right. Next for dynamic binding, you can say bind group two and binding one. And this is supposed to be for our tile map chunk data. All right, so we did just copy paste his uh, fragment shaders, right? So this should this should line up with uh, what's going on there. That looks good. Theoretically, that's where that belongs. Then we can come here and say default default. All right, I'm going to default on that. This is the end of a function call. I don't make training calls for that. This here looks pretty good. All right. Yeah. So now we have, so now we've tied in our pipeline, right? With our fragment shaders, right? To these chunk components, right? And talks about uh, which paths that we're doing the stuff in and, uh, you know, the meshes that we're playing with and everything else. So let's, uh, Oh, right, we're tying, we're starting to tie stuff in now. So if I uh, if I hit the play button, probably nothing will work because we don't use any of these uh, chunk components yet. Yep, we still see nothing. That's fine and good. Now I think the rest of the magic is going to be in this function that we were at before where we're kind of we're, we're we are figuring some stuff out now all right you just uh let me take my medicine here real quick All right, so this will be this will be interesting. I wonder if we can get any printouts. You know, this is the uh, just for just for curiosity's sake, right? Where we can determine whether or not like any of these sorts of things have happened, right? So we can say modify, and here we can say like 
you know, remove. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just some simple sort of, yeah, simple sort of things here, right, to play around with. Just for fun. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we do see one that says created. And hopefully only one. But uh, we'll find out, yes? Yes. So, we hit play, and... Hey! Created! Ha ha ha! Alright, see? our This code is doing something. So that's, that's pretty cool. So because it said created, it was inserted into changed maps. Alright, so let's double check our query here. Because I don't think it matches up well with our uh, map component. I could be wrong. Let's uh, let's, let's think about it though, right? So we've got we've got some sort of we want we want the entity. We've got some sort of handle map. Right. So this here should actually be coming from kind of this sort of guy here, right? Yeah. I'm, I think so. It comes from this sort of guy. Could be wrong, but do not know. Let's see. So, just uh, throw inside of some of that there. Boom, right? So we've got... That's our components that we are looking for. All right. He's got he's got an entity. Yeah, I think we, we we've got that. That's fine. We've got a handle for a map. That looks fine. Yeah. Here he's got this color material. I don't, I don't know what that is. You know, it's like I don't. He's got a hash map. Color material. Wow. I mean, that's just crazy, right? Wow. What's up? It's supposed to be. We could probably. Like, what is a color material? All right, so it's uh, a color material has a color, and or maybe has like this texture handle, an optional texture handle. All right, cool. But like we really are playing around with, we want to play around with a texture atlas though, don't we? I mean, look at this guy. He's got he's got some cool stuff. Yeah, there's, there's all our texture handles right there. Hmm. So I think that... Yeah, we're gonna have to, have to figure something out. I do like, I do like texture atlas for our little tile map. I'm hoping it'll, it'll, it'll work out of the box sort of thing, you know? But let's, uh... Let's play with the query. I think I want... almost even looks like, you know, tile to color material. And it's like, cool, but we already have all of that. With, with what? And why do we need to mutate? Oh no, man. It's gonna... All right, comment that out for now, right? And we're gonna say we want uh, a reference to a, what? A handle of a texture atlas. All right, and we're gonna we're, we're gonna hope that our query is gonna return some results here, and I think that it should because this is because this should match up with our. With our thing here, right? This matches up with that, with those components. And in our main, that's precisely what we added, right? We said, yeah, give me some of them Vox tile map components. Boom. We gave it. We gave it our map handle and we gave it a texture atlas handle. So we may have to figure out how to change, right? Our, maybe our fragment shader, vertex shader, both of them. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, as opposed to using this color material, we, I think we want we want to use this texture atlas. 
Right, so that might might involve going into some bevy source code to figure out like, okay, how do I how do I use this texture atlas again? That'd be that'd be good to know. Sort of a sort of a thing there, right? So that is what we are looking for. Um Hmm. Huh. Hmm. I'm beginning to think of why it might be the way that I'm not sure. I'm beginning to think of why it may be the way it is. Or we'll We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. We're gonna try getting it working with this guy. Let's see what we can do. Alright. Alright, so. What are we doing here? Um, we got some pretzel racks going. Ow. Got that music pan. It's all about that music. Bum, 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 bum. Alright. We got some camera 2Ds. We got some identity. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing. You know what we're doing? No? Yeah, I think we're gonna go back into that function that we were, uh, that we left off at. And we're gonna come back into our, um... So, oh, new meshes, huh? Yeah, we need a, we need some sort of a mesh, I think, right? Because, so this right here is just a hash map. And this is for, so the key is the handle to a map. Which, alright, that's fine. And we have these, uh, VEC U32, U32 handle meshes. And we saw this before in our, uh, chunk. In our chunky stuff. Oh, when I go into mod view, I show under. All right, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I, I saw you. I saw you eventually, but like, no, for for quite a while, you were not showing up in the users, any or, or any, anywhere in the thing. But yes, I know you normally show up under mod view. I know that. I I hit the users in chat, and I can take a look, and you know, there's Wolfborn, hooray! So very cool, very cool. So. What are we gonna do, man? We got all sorts of stuff and things going. I'm gonna figure this out. What was I doing? All right, a little bit of interruption there. Get back into it. Yeah. So our our little chunk components guy, right? He's got all he's got all that magic stuff for us. He's got the um, meshes. I thought somebody somewhere I did recently had the vex of the. Yeah, the U32, U32 things go. This guy theoretically does. Ah, that guy. You need a mesh? Maybe? Hard to say? His deal. I like get rid of it from map. Map's not the one that. He's got a list of meshes. Uh, right. So the whole point, I think, maybe is to save the meshes. Do the meshes line up with the chunks? Is that what's going on here? Alright, so let me double check their map component. I like... I make decisions and I forget what I did. Okay. But yeah, we were, we were... We were moving pretty fast for a moment, so now it's time to catch back up with ourselves to figure out, like... Figure out what we were doing. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we've got meshes, layers. We don't, I don't, I don't even have layers. All right, so it's kind of weird. Um. Hmm. All right, so for each one of his layers, so he's got a vec of layers, and a layer basically constitutes a vec of tile set layers. He's got, like, layers of layers of layers. Alright, let's pull this back up over here, right? So this is his map. This is this is for working with tiled. I'm not interested in working with tiles, right? I just 
I want to have a simple thing. It's not tiled based. It'll work for any sort of thing, right? That's the idea. So we're, we're like, I don't, I don't want this, right? So there's meshes in here. There's layers in here. All sorts of stuff and things, right? The layers are weird because it's like, okay, so we've got a list of layers, who in turn, you know, in each layer basically is a list of tile set layer. And then a tile set layer is a, you know, list of list of chunks. You know, so that's, that's quite a lot. Um, I think we were trying to basically combine our map and tile set layer together. These sorts of components. Because right now, right now I'm not interested in layers. You know, if you want to have layers, just draw more more than one map at a time, I guess. <laughs> Some transparency or something, right? And then, um, what? So then we've got, uh, some Vec. Vec, Vec, Chunk, right? Right, we just, we chose to just use a width. Like a... A map width. Which, which uh, defaults to one. Right? And that's, uh, then we have one Chunk. And our chunk is 1024, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that looks good. I have to figure out why we want these sorts of meshes. I'm curious about the U32s in there. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. Maybe it's uh, some width and height and then a mesh sort of thing that they've got going on there. Maybe this relates to our to to the chunks some way. That's, uh, that's what we're trying to figure out here. Alright, so we've got... Yeah, so do we need, do we need these meshes? I'll, I'll just go ahead and throw them in here. Just to be like, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we need to figure out meshes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of associate them over here at the bottom with, with the chunks, right? Yeah. So this right here is our map width. Which tells us how to interpret our vector of chunks. Right, so that uh, you know, so we can we can do the same thing we did for chunk with map, right, and have some sort of like get chunk x y, and then uh, and then based on the map width, there is you know we'll figure that out here. It's always thirty two. The uh, it's always thirty, so we're good to go. And then uh, in fact, we make that like a constant or something, right, just for fun, right? Uh. Let's see how that works, right? So we can go like what const, what chunk, chunk size. I don't know. Can I just say chunk size? I don't know. And what do we want here? We want to have some sort of like a um, I don't know. U size. That's equal to thirty-two. All right. And then you can basically just say chunk size times. Chunk size. All right. How do you how how do you want this? To be? Okay. Chunk size. Fine. And it's actually going to be chunk. Yeah, it's it's fine. I like chunk size. Here's the size of our chunk. All right. But then theoretically, boom, boom. That makes it a little more modular, right? And then we can come in here, and we can just say chunk size. Chunk size up in here, it's a little more. Oh, and then, and if I ever want to change the chunk size somewhere, it's just one place to go. Wait. All right, so that's a that's a little better than what it was, right? It's always like you know, every little pass through your code, you make it a little better than what it was, and uh, you should be good to go. Let's see here. Uh, chunk size times y, right? So if it's zero, then that's zero, and we're plusing. X to it, etc., and that all looks uh, very good. And, uh, but we don't need to worry too much, right, about the, uh, there's like little U8s, maybe. Maybe I can make them bigger, I don't know. It's, uh, it's fine. But, uh, yeah, so we got some chunk size. That is good. Uh, map width, like how how big do you want a given map to be? How many chunks, really? Two hundred fifty-six chunk chunks of uh, <laughs> of these like twelve hundred, right? Twelve hundred twenty-four sort of things, right? 
And then, uh, oh, that reminds me. So now that we've done that, we can actually upgrade our code over here, right? Where we can say, uh, what? Alright, so we want to say, what? Chon. Size. Times. Uh, And we've already got some imports, some stuff there, right? This is part of a map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got some of that, and we can just say... You know, it might be helpful, actually, if we, like... Alright, cool. And we got some pub, and then we can say, yes, chunk size! Give me, give me all the chunk sizes! Alright, good to go. And now what? Now we can come down here. We got our map. Is that, are you mad at map now? Why are you mad at map? Gave you a chunk. Chunk size time chunk. Of chunk size, chunk size. And then what? And then we basically want to say what? Oh. Uh, uh, of what? We want chunk size minus one. And then, uh, same thing here, right? Uh, chunk size minus one. Cool. Oh. That's a little... a little better. I don't know if it's a lot better, but it's a little better. Alright, so now what? So we've, uh... Let's, let's go ahead and recomment this out, just because we really want to make sure that, you know... We didn't break nothing we already had working, right? With our recent changes. Uh, now what? Here, like... I expected a U8. The U size was found. You know what? Fine. U size all of them. U size. U size. Right? And now I don't need to say as U size. Now I don't need to say as U size. Fighting with rust over numbers. Oh, all right, that's fine. Got it. Got this. All right, so yep. U size and U. I don't need. All right. Oh, all right. Missing meshes, huh? Hmm. Yeah. All right. So if I what if I hit in uh, default defaults, map actually to find default somewhere. Or is it gonna be mad at me for not doing that? All right. It's mad at that. Fine. What? Right. We're just gonna go into our um. Yeah, meshes, right? So what do we what do we define for? Are we not define default for map? Where do we make a map? Where, where are we making a map? This guy made a map. Yeah. Yeah, that guy made a map. Uh I mean, see. We, we don't derive any defaults for default for map, you know? So we. Yep, okay. Well, who do you ever have to. Whoever makes them. If somebody in here make a map. He just loads it from there, huh? Alright. Hmm. So then the loader is the one who makes the maps. Where, where do you make your map?
We got some meshes in here. Wow. Oof. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he's making a bunch of meshes from where? From the tile set. Oh. All right. That's why he has a bunch of meshes, I think. And these should all basically... Yeah, so he basically has a mesh per item on his texture atlas, right? Which is like the, the tile set, the tiled tile set. And then he uh, he's going to generate a mesh for each one. Alright, which is fine. I was wondering where that sort of stuff was. Like, where has he been hiding that stuff? I don't even know. Oh, it's, it's where he goes to load it. Duh. So it's like, all right. So at least here we can we can double check ourselves and like what we were thinking, right? Like, um, you know, here map is given a map. Well, what is map? For to be given to a map. And it's this tiled thing, which is a library that he himself sort of uh, includes, right? So we've got this. Um, we got yeah. This is this is some crate map stuff, right? But we also have. Uh, tiled somewhere. The tiled could even just be... I think it's even the name of the crate, right? Tiled. Yeah, so he doesn't, he doesn't even need a use statement. Comes with tiled. And he says, parse with path. And he parses out a map. Sweet. You know, then, then we get map width and map height. And we're doing all this stuff with this map that we're parsing from tiled. Alright, so, yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff going. What else, what else do we need? What do we need? I don't know. So, yeah, so he's gonna... So we probably also need to generate a mesh. Maybe even per... Um, you, can do, you can do, like, per tile type. Right? That's sort of a thing. We, we've got the index for those. We know exactly how many tile types we have. We just need a, a mesh per per one, right? Uh, as opposed to a vec, we maybe do a hash map. Yeah, this looks like... Alright, so that's what that looks like. So, so, that's, so that's where those meshes come from. Alright, good to know. No, we don't actually have those. Yet. No. Do we need to generate them at some point? Maybe. Yeah, so we need to... We need, so we'll, we'll, we'll think about that. We don't... We don't have... Oops, that, that was fine. What don't we need? We're gonna come back out here. I don't think we need these meshes yet. Alright. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll need them eventually. We'll need something eventually. Uh... So, yeah, so new meshes. This is like, yeah, for a handle map, he's, yeah, he's got some new meshes in here. What did he do? And he was saying, like, what? For every changed map, and remember, we've already proven that when, when we got this running, a changed map is being called. So when we get our brand new map, what do we need from it? Right, we need some stuff. I don't know about this, like, this Vex stuff, etc. Where did this come from? This is... Oh, this is a hash map. This is, this is our, these are our new meshes. Oh, okay. New meshes. Yes, yeah, so these are the meshes that we are probably generating as a part of what? Our chunks, right? Probably has, if, it probably are, is chunk related. So let's, uh, I'm gonna go back in here over to the, uh, what do you call it? The, the tile map? Nope. Not that, not that one. What do I want? I want map? Yes. Alright, so we're, we're still here in the sort of process loaded tile map function. Alright, where we're trying to figure some stuff out. And, uh, we, so we've already, we've already figured out how our maps have changed. Now that we know how our maps have changed, I guess we need to figure out how to get these new meshes. So what is... this is about like mesh and map meshes. 
What's map in this context? Map is our maps.get mute changed map. Which is again, is this tiled map or is this iron map? I think it's iron map, right? Yeah, because then it's like, yeah, for each tile set. You know, I've only got one tile set. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, tile is complicated. Alright, so that's fine. I'm just trying to do like the, the simplest thing. Like so, and maybe so. Maybe this is where like uh, we've been following this sort of stuff a little too closely, and that's fine. It just means that we need to we need to sort of back off a little bit from what's going on, and sort of try to figure out like, okay, what what are they doing here, right? So we don't we don't worry about these tile sets. There is some sort of a material map, and you know it's going to have a key. Yeah, so we. we I mean, like, that's... Materials map. Yeah, it's still a per-tile set thing, right? Alright, it's still a per-tile set sort of thing. This is about all those tile sets. What's the point of it, though? What are we getting out of it? Apparently, we are going into materials map and inserting some materials. From what? From our tiles map. Or for, from our tile sets, right? So, but we don't have tile sets, so we don't have to worry about that. We just have the one texture atlas. Right, alright. So we so we have our texture atlas. Okay, great. So now, for each mesh, in the meshes... Right, I guess we're, what, we're drain all, sort of a thing. Which is a, that's an interesting sort of a verb there, right? We're gonna get a... Handle so meshes add mesh dot two and we get a handle from that. So what is a meshes? I forget. It's our resmoot assets mesh. All right. Yeah. So we we drain them all from here. We drain them out. And as we drain them out, we say, hey, add mesh dot two. <laughs> Not mesh dot one or mesh dot whatever else. All right, so add mesh dot two, and then uh, all right, and then what? Then if the new mesh is right, which uh, we've established up here, contains the changed map, which all right. I don't know, man. We have to figure figure out what this guy was doing, what he was thinking. There's a lot of stuff going on. We got a bunch of meshes. We're like adding stuff and removing stuff and getting things set up. But for what purpose? For what purpose? Um. Ultimately, I think this is the purpose, right? Because we want to spawn a chunk component. Right? I don't know about uh I don't know about this tile map chunk thing. Maybe get rid of it. I don't know. Alright, we can uh so that's what we're gonna do. We got some uh, materials here. You got the mesh here. Alright, we clone we clone some stuff from material handle from a from a material handle. We can uh mesh mesh clone. Alright. And then what? We can uh do some transforms according to our translation. I think this was the main thing that we get out of it. Spawning these chunk components. Which we hope are then rendered. So maybe I should start at the end. And then and then kind of work backwards is what we'll do. Alright. We'll start at the end and work backwards. We'll find out how to... We'll, we'll use these commands here. To spawn a chunk component of our own. And then we'll try to get it to render a chunk as best we can. Yeah, and it's kind of like 
from there we'll figure out like you know what was like what was what was the deal with all, all of this stuff anyways <laughs> yeah, I think I think maybe the best thing to do is to work backwards yeah I think that uh yeah so that's what we'll do all right cool so I am needing of lunch and stuff but I think I'll have to, uh, I'll be back later and we're gonna get some stuff done. We, uh, I will not be gone for long. Uh, we are gonna try to figure out how to, how to work with Bevy, uh, to render tiles. Uh, I'm hoping to simplify a whole lot of this stuff once I, once I get something to render and show up. That's part of, uh, you know, that's a part of the whole process, right? As we are going to, you know, you just, you just do whatever you can to make stuff kind of work. And you really make it work good. And then you simplify it real good. The next thing you know, you have this nice cohesive hole to play with. That's what that's what we're working toward. That's what we're trying to figure out. So uh, until next time. Let's see. Yeah, so until next time. Which again, shouldn't be too long from now. I'm hungry. I'm going to get some food. Um... Uh, Maybe maybe one o'clock, one thirty, something like that, right? Uh, see you guys later.